bloody hell, bro. It doesn't end. The shit don't end for Diddy. The shit don't end. Like, it won't stop, can't stop. Another lawsuit. But this time, this lawsuit is a bit dicey because it includes Dawn Ricard, Dawn Richard from fucking Danity Kane. You remember her? She, she's had a pretty decent solo career since leaving Danity Kane or since Danity Kane kind of split up. Um, she does a lot of like really cool, I'd say like electronic music, what well, electronic infused R&B, which I would say really, really good shit. Um, I really fucking like her. I think she's a really creative artist and she's somebody that a lot of people would say has been close to Diddy over the years. So if she says something, it seems likely to be true. So this is Curse of Diddy. It says, Diddy sued for monstrous behavior, allegations of brutality and sexual abuse. There's actually a whole entire lawsuit over it as well, which I'm probably going to read over on another stream, dedicate the whole thing to reading over it because some of the facts are pretty scary and pretty sad. I think there's a section in one of the lawsuit where it says um, she reports that she was at a dinner with Diddy and Cassie and a few other people and Diddy punched Cassie in front of the whole table and the whole table happened to have people like Usher and shit on there and they saw the whole thing and just continued eating and it's like ooh so I think a lot of people are going to look a bit bad if this is deemed to be true so let's read the actual article itself and what happens here um it just keeps on going from bad to worse for Diddy um let's read the actual, the actual entire one before we get to the update it says Diddy is facing another lawsuit from a new accuser a former bandmate um, who claims the music mogul belittled, terrorized, and sexually abused her while she was also witnessed savagely beat his ex, Cassie. According to the lawsuit obtained by TMZ, Dawn Richard um, says that she was caught, that she caught Diddy in a web as participant. No, she, she was caught in Diddy's web as a participant in 2004 making the band, with Bad Boy CEO manipulating her by promising her to advance her singing career if she relented to this alleged twisted demands. Yo, I would love, I would love to see um, the show with fucking, what's her face? I forgot her name. The show about being a model and also making a band. Those type of shows make a comeback nowadays. With the way people are so sensitive, with the way people think nowadays words is violence and they're all fucking about, you know, mental health and all that nonsense. I would love to see those type of shows nowadays. The amount of carnage and chaos those shows would cause on the timeline, the amount of protests and hashtags and movements, it would be delightful to watch. You know me, I'm a, I'm a consumer anarchist. I would love to see it. I'd love to see making the band 2024 and all those fucking crazy stunts he made them do, basically bullying them, torturing them, keeping them up all night, making them walk from one side of New York to the other side of New York to go pick up a pie, like crazy shit, right? I would love to see it nowadays. Like people don't know how hard it was to be a celebrity back in the day. Nowadays, you can prop your phone up in your fucking single room somewhere and shake your ass and suddenly, you know, you could be the next big thing. Back in the day, to be a star, you had to like, you had to do some crazy shit. You had to go on Rogan's show and like drink donkey cum and shit. You had to go on TV and, and have Diddy bully you and kind of belittle you and embarrass you and shame you in public. Like you had to go through some stuff to make it. So those people, that's why those people are still around nowadays. They went through the real hard knock school of being a celebrity, not the easy way out nowadays, man. Anyway, let's continue. It says... The former Danity K member said that during an onset audition, Diddy called female contestants fat, ugly, bitches and hoes. This is kind of light, but nowadays this sort of shit. Like if you were to go, if you were a judge now on like the Masked Singer, if you were a judge on the American Idol, if you were a judge on one of those type of shows and you called one of the contestants a bitch, even if she was being a bitch, if you called her ugly, even if she was objectively ugly, if you called that person fat, even if they were objectively fat, you would get cancelled so fast, your fucking head would spin. I swear to God, it will be over for you before you even got back to your fucking hotel. If you said those things, and these are probably, these are quite light. Imagine, that was normal back in the day. Like, why are you crying? Man up, pull yourself up. Ugh, you're embarrassing. Like, even that Gordon Ramsay sh um, sandwich thing they did, Remember that that like iconic clip of Gordon Ramsay putting the two bits of bread um, on the other side, on the either side of that woman's face and shit. You could never do that nowadays. That would be abuse. If Gordon Ramsay did that nowadays, that would be abuse. He'd be he'd have to pay that woman millions. 
You know what I mean? Like people, like, people got away with murder back in the days. Like, you could really abuse people for... And to be fair, for us in general, it makes for better TV. Let's be honest. Yes, those people suffered. Yes, they went through things. Yes, they haven't been able to recover. The mental anguish. Meh, 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 meh. But as viewers, that shit was entertaining. Like, we were gripped. Like, I never missed a kitchen nightmare. I never missed a kitchen nightmare. I'd watch the reruns. That's how entertaining that shit was. That shit was real. And those people were hungry. They were hungry to be famous. They were hungry to have money, right? To have a place to sleep, to eat. <laughs> they were hungry. And the presenters were also hungry to make a name for themselves. You know what I mean? Like, everybody won. It continues. Um, she said Diddy had particular disdain for her because she was young and excited to work with such a famous person. It, what? Diddy hated her because she liked working for... That is a mad line, isn't it? She said that Diddy had particular disdain for her because she was young and excited to work with such a famous person. Yo, Diddy's a real piece of shit. He actually hated you. The more of a fan you were of him, the more he hated you. <laughs> that reminds me of like, that's actually quite common, isn't it? That's actually like, that's a little bit, with people that are abusive and manipulative, sometimes they despise you for allowing them to get away with their manipulative and abusive behavior, you know? Like, it's almost like, I think it happens a lot, again, I'm talking on my ass here, but I think it happens a lot in domestic violence abu abuse cases where the guy sometimes will exert that dominance and that authority or that abuse on somebody or the woman and be extra mean almost because he's trying to punish her for still being there. Do you know what I mean? Like, how, how could you put up with me? Like, I'm a piece of shit. And it's, it's a weird logic, but I'm sure I read it somewhere. I'm sure I did. I'm sure I read it somewhere. It continues. Um, in 2005, the court doc says that Richard saw another of Diddy's former girlfriends, Kim Porter, crying as she left the music studio with her face all banged up. It was then that Richard says, um, realized that Diddy was capable of violence and her life could be in danger. Look at this man, though, man. But that's the thing, like, honestly, man. Honestly. Honestly. Like, just look at his face. <laughs> just look at his face bro that guy is on demon that that guy is demon time personified like, i think when people when people first used the phrase demon time it was mostly like a horny freak thing but demon time is him that's demon time like you know that's fucking demon time for real for real he'll spike your drink like you're his friend he'll spike your drink not even that's like a strange girl like you're his friend he's just feeling like what he's feeling like to he'd roll the dice he just spikes your drink fuck it <laughs> you know just on some like what what, what? I, I know you bro like what the fuck yeah just spike your drink you wake up with no underwear like what the fuck bro what what speak and i end your career and he can actually end your career back then especially scary shit bro the fuck he, imagine all the stuff he's gotten away with from people that are too scared to come forward these are big people coming forward Imagine the ones who are too scared to come forward. Oof. Would you, would you, would you, woo. It continues. A year later, Richard um, was present when Diddy was first introduced to Cassie, invading her space while transfixed on her in a predatory fashion. According to Dux, in 2009, he says she personally witnessed Diddy, high on drugs, throw Cassie against the wall, choke her, and then drag her up a flight of stairs. And after we've seen that video... Of him kicking the shit out of her in the hotel place with his, with his, with his towel on. We all know that's possible. <sighs> Hopefully she got the bag. I'm sure she did. But big up Cassie for opening the floodgates. Hopefully she got the fucking bag. She deserves it, man. She suffered in silence for a fucking long ass time. It continues. Richard says that Diddy also held, held, held a scolding pan of eggs at Cassie. While yelling, I've been asking you for my shit. I can't stand you, bitch. You never do it right what you're making eggs imagine making eggs and wanting to throw it at your fucking missus you usually when you're making eggs you're in a good mood who doesn't like eggs scrambled fried boiled who doesn't like eggs usually a good time especially if you're making it with somebody else like, oh how many eggs you want babe you want two you want one like it's a good time how can you get mad making eggs guys a piece of shit um on another occasion richard says that diddy um, shot, sh sorry, socked Cassie in the face. 
wrapped his hands around her throat, attempted to strangle her inside his LA mansion. It's actually a miracle he didn't kill that girl. Considering how much smaller she is compared to him, it's a miracle he didn't like kill her by accident, honestly. All this abuse. It's a miracle she didn't die. Fucking hell. God almighty. At some point, Richard says she and others, including her Diddy Dirty Money bandmate, um, Kalina Harper, showed their support to Cassie and advised her to leave Diddy, who found out about the conversation and threatened, y'all bitches don't get in my relationship. Don't tell my bitch what she need to be doing. Just make money. Shut the fuck up. I end artists. I shelve careers. You could be missing. You bitches want to die today? Yo, I believe him, man. I believe him. I believe him, bro. There were stories. When this thing was first going down, I remember watching YouTube videos of random people saying there were stories of back in the day, Diddy going to LA, Dolo, Dolo, and chasing Suge Knight around LA with guns and shit. There's stories from people, certified people like involved in the music industry, certified like gangbangers saying, yes, we can vouch. There's stories, hood stories of Diddy going to fucking LA Dolo with straps in the car looking for Suge Knight. And, and Suge Knight running around LA trying to like escape and not like be seen by Diddy. Like that, that <laughs> honestly, it's always guys like that who are the scariest. Guys you least expect, you know? Fucking hell. Meanwhile, Rashad says she too became a victim of Diddy's abuse, forcing her to rehearse 48 hours at a time without sleep. As a result, she says she dropped a lot of weight and became dehydrated and fatigued while suffering awful rashes. Now, all the things we heard were horrible. But was this bad though? Because now, Richard is still a very legit artist. She probably ghostwrites a lot of people. She probably produces for a lot of people. She's a hell of a dancer, a hell of a performer. So although Diddy did, you know, was on Demon Time, was abusive, was a piece of shit, this extent, this kind of extraneous and crazy demands he put on these artists, making them rehearse for 48 hours straight, it served them good. Because now they're all fucking top tier artists. None of those people from Dan Kane are not talented. They're all talented. They're all really good at what they do. If they want to come back, they can if they want to. So he left them with a good foundation. Again, piece of shit human being. Belongs under the fucking prison. But when it comes to the art, you can't deny, man. You can't deny that recent album. That fucking, that one that came out in September 2023. Last year with the red cover. That shit might be one of the best albums of the year. But in the midst of making that album, he was allegedly, you know, he was allegedly sending fucking young Miami around America in private jets carrying fucking pink cocaine and shit. You know? <laughs> the duality of man can be a piece of shit but can also create great art. God damn it. You know? God damn it. God fucking damn it. It continues. Um, blah, blah, blah. She says one time Diddy demanded she come to his home in Miami where he was only wearing underwear. When she asked him to put on clothes, did he refuse screaming, this is my fucking house? By the way, this is like a standard, this is like a standard um, sexual abuser, rapist, creepy guy move, isn't it? I think every woman out there, every man out there, this should be one of your things that should be on the front of your mind. If you ever go to someone's house, or if they ever invite you somewhere, and you see that person, and they're only wearing a dressing gown or their underwear, run. Those are signs immediately like if somebody asks you oh let's only talk on i think there should be two signs that you're dealing with a creep or an abuser number one when they meet you for the first time like alone they're wearing their underwear they're wearing nothing or they're wearing a dressing gown the second sign that you're with a weirdo a creep or an abuser or a rapist is if they ask you for a snapchat <laughs> if they're over the age of 19 and they want to communicate with you on snapchat only run if they invite you to the hotel room to like I don't know, work on some music and you open the door and they're wearing their underwear, run. Please do that because every story you hear of somebody being a rapist and then he opened the door and he was wearing his boxes and then he opened the door, he was hanging upside down on the fucking, you know, <laughs> on the fucking windowsill with no fucking underwear on completely. Honestly, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, bring up Coiler in the chat. Bring up Coiler. You're about to go live, then Shannon Sharp walks into the room with just his shower. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
Honestly, run. Run, 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 run. Please, I beg of you. It continues. Did he treat me to Richard? Got worse, she says, between 2009 and 2011. Richard says that Diddy once barged into her dressing room while she was naked at his recording studio. She says, and Diddy inappropriately touched her breast and butt. <sighs> Diddy says he also, Diddy, she says, also locked her in a car with highly tinted windows <clears throat> for, <clears throat> for two hours while she screamed for help, even calling her dad to help. <laughs> He's probably like, this is my studio, bitch. If I want to touch you, I can touch you. That's the kind of abuser he is, I bet. I bet he's one of those kind of freaks. You're in my house using my electricity. If I want to put my hand on your leg, I can put my hand on your leg. It's like, ugh. Bro, <laughs> what? But I bet you that's the kind of guy he is. Like, legit. Like, fuck it, now. Um, it continues. Richard claims her dad traveled from Baltimore to New York to free his daughter and confront Diddy. She couldn't just smash the car window with her feet or something. Threatened to report him to the police, but she said Diddy told her dad, think about your daughter, think about your daughter's career. Honestly, only celebrities can do that. If my daughter calls me, friend, if my daughter calls me distressed, panicked, you know how women are as well, crying, <laughs> like sobbing, you can hear the bogey for over the phone and shit. And says, dad, like Diddy locked me in a car and I can't get out. When I get there, I'm not having a conversation about my daughter's career. I'm getting my daughter out of the car and I'm also caving your head in. We're not having a civil conversation about the career, but because he's famous, people just let him get away with murder. That That's a part of the reason why when I was watching the fucking, when I was watching the fucking, um, what you call it? When I was watching the, when I was reading, sorry, the Weinstein documentary, that's why one of the reasons why I was so fucking annoyed by the Weinstein documentary. I didn't like it, you know? I was really annoyed by the Weinstein documentary. Because as, as as monstrous as Harvey Weinstein was, the the real annoying thing about it was that he was sort of enabled and got away with that behavior because everyone talk, so, sort of like turned a blind eye to the bullshit. Like, especially that one that one story, I think it was like an assistant or something. So somebody nicked close to him, he tried to sexually abuse. She turned him down. But then when Harvey asked her about her friend, who was an actor, she recommended she go meet Harvey Weinstein. And when the girl asked her, hey, he's asking me to meet him at a hotel. Is that cool? She says, yes, go. He's safe. And obviously she ended up getting abused. And it's like, bruh, I know this guy's a piece of shit. And I know I'm of, a, I'm of the belief, like, if if good exists, evil exists in the world. And there are some, there are going to be evil people out there in the world. But it's up to us, quote, unquote, good people to call out the evil. But if us good people are sort of like turning a blind eye to the evil or enabling the evil, then fucking hell, mate. Yeah, I mean, we, we stand no chance. We stand no fucking chance, honestly. But hey, um, big up Dawn Ricard. Really do appreciate Dawn Ricard for standing up and saying what she said. Really, really do appreciate her. Big up Dawn Ricard. Hopefully she gets her fucking bag because she deserves it. She put up with a lot of abuse, bro. She put up with a, she put up with Diddy when he was like at his most enabled. Like Danny D. Kane, Bad Boy era, when everyone thought Diddy could do no wrong. He was this, he was this, musical musical industry savant and maestro he had that incredible story about coming up as an intern and then becoming one of the biggest record label executives ever the history with biggie his own history as a musician producer like he was he got away with murder because he put out great songs he was he put off great great videos like just visuals everything so he was allowed to get away with anything so she really went through one of the dark periods so Big up her, man. Honestly, big up her. Big up, big up her for having the courage to say what she said. And I'm sure it's only going to get harder now, but big up her for at least having the courage to say what she says. Big up Danity Kane. Big up Dawn Ricard. Big up Danity Kane. Big up Dawn Ricard.